here we are back in the shop working on the Saab 900. We can see in the background there, the, uh, the old 9000 has the uh, DI cassette pulled out of it. <laughs> I needed a set of resistor spark plugs and um, I didn't have any in any of my collection. So I had to pull them out of there. So we'll put them back in there maybe when I'm done this little experiment. And this experiment we're doing today is the DI 88 conversion sort of test out, making sure it sort of works. I had a DI APC harness from a 91. Uh, I've been holding on to it for years and years and years. And it has the necessary connectors. Um, this is the DI harness that goes obviously to the cassette and this goes to the car. So I needed those connectors, um, ideally. So obviously that harness provided. So as you can see, I've got the resistor spark plugs from the 9000 fitted. I've got the DI cassette installed. And you can see my harness is attached, grounded. And you can see it goes to this hodgepodge of wiring right here. So we can see the power lead to the actual cassette is right here. And I'm just gonna attach that Actually, I'll have to attach it now because it's no harm. So we're going to touch that onto positive. Ooh, I heard it energize. We can see, oh, the Hall effect. Oh, that's plugged in. I'll just unplug that just for, just for shits and giggles. But we can see the spark plug leads are just hanging on the hanging in the breeze. Ain't eh? they're not doing nothing. There's no ignition coil installed. So it's going to be if it's going to run, it's going to run 100% off of the uh, DI computer. So we'll go over to this side. See the wiring from the old harness comes up here, gets attached here, comes up here to my DI computer. I, I should have put it in the case, but I was kind of messing around with it. So we have it all sort of hokily wired together. We have the Hall effect sensor right here um, coming up through the intake manifold. We have a vacuum line coming from the intake manifold to our map sensor. And our map sensor obviously is connected to here as well. You just got some old twisty twisty going on with the wires. Um, I'm using the old ignition coil power lead to power the APC box. And to give the car the RPM signal, I have the blue wire coming from the uh, APC, or not the DI, not the APC, but the DI module connecting to the, uh, the test connector on the car. And that one obviously is the RPM signal. And then this guy here is just constant hot. Um, I think, I don't know why this needs constant hop, but it does. And so I'll uh, do what it asks. So, yeah, I mean, everything's hooked up the way it is. It's a fairly simple system. I mean, you've got a Hall effect sensor, map sensor, computer, and cassette. There's not really a hell of a lot of other things going on here. So let's just uh, turn it on and see if it will crank. If it's going to start, it should start um, perfectly as if it's like original factory. So we'll see. Let's go here. Oh, nice. All right. Well, that looks like it actually started just fine. It sounds the same as it did before, as it should. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. Hey, no complaints here. And the, t the timing obviously doesn't have to be changed because I'm not obviously using the distributor anymore and the whole effect is fixed to the engine. So the timing is going to be correct. So basically, that's sort of it. I mean, that's all there is to this system. So, no more distributor, none of that other crap. I can just pretty much figure out where I want everything to go. I just heard a, I just heard a misfire. Wonder what that's all about. Oh, well, anyway, we're gonna get all these wires cleaned up because this is not an ideal situation. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd give a sort of a closure video of the di direct ignition system actually working in the car. Yeah, you can see the, uh, this is going to clean stuff up a lot in the engine bay, that's for sure. Anyway, bye for now.